Hey guys, it's Michelle Vaughn. I'm here on our weekly LO Zoom call. We have um, Andrew, who I call marketing genius with Lead Pops. Um, I have my personal website through them. I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper um, and get you know a little bit more questions answered. Everyone, feel free to let we're gonna let Andrew have the floor, and feel free to ask your questions in the chat box or un unclick your mute button. But if you're not talking, go ahead and put the mute button on. All right, you have the floor, Andrew. What's up, everybody? Michelle, thanks for having me on. Uh, interesting times, obviously, for sure. So thank you for making a little bit of time to join us uh, today. Uh, you know, at Lead Pops, we're still we're still cranking away. Uh, we've had actually a pretty pretty solid start to the year, all things considered. Um, you know, our clients, for the most part, generally speaking, um, you know, we're seeing not feedback that things have died down or things are really slowing down for them in terms of marketing and lead gen. A lot of clients are reporting the opposite of that. They're seeing an increase in leads. Uh, more opportunities are happening. You know, obviously I think there's just, there's a result of that. People spending more time on their phones, on their laptops, more screen time means more opportunities to get in front of people who are on the internet. Right. And that's where all of our clients are. That's where everybody is where they're online. So the more places that you can, you can strategically get out there uh, that, that have a, an audience that have eyeballs, the, the better you're going to do. So we're big proponents of, you know, we're doing the Facebook ads, we're doing the Google ads, we're doing websites, we're helping now clients with their blogging and their email marketing and reputation and all that kind of stuff. So really uh, we're, we're doing our best to fulfill the part of a, a like having a marketing team uh, on, on, on your staff that doesn't come with the cost of having, five or 10 people in your office to handle all that kind of stuff for you. So, you know, we do the websites, which is kind of typically for us, it's like the, the foundation, you know, I wrote a, a book about this stuff. I'm not going to grab it, but there's a book that I wrote that talks a lot about this. That's the first chapter is you got to have a website that's built for lead gen, whether I build it for you, I'd love to, if I don't just follow the recipe I lay out in the book to a T and you'll, you'll see, more of the people that are looking for you convert into leads. There's, there's just such an important piece that I, I think still, still in 2020, so many loan officers are missing is, is having a web presence that is, is built for marketing and, and lead generation. Thank you, Michelle. So yeah, chapter one and two of that book, I don't even get into marketing in the later chapters without first explaining the importance of having a website and having landing pages that are built for lead gen. Otherwise, spending money on marketing, doing Facebook ads, doing a lot of blogging and videos and email marketing, all this stuff a lot of people are doing. It just doesn't work as well if you haven't first optimized for, for the lead gen, which is, you know, that's our, that's our bread and butter as we do the websites and the lead funnels. And then we work with you on how to market those things. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who all has lead pops here or doesn't. I use them for my website. Um, it was super easy to get set up, but I'm pretty like, y'all know I'm all over the place. So I kind of want to dive in more. I don't know if anybody else has this where like, I still have to learn how to do funnels and all that kind of stuff. Or even you tell me how or where you go. Cause I want to get more into that. Um, or like, where would you suggest we go for that? I mean, I know we can email and then, yeah, here's, here's what we do. We have a really rad support team. We yeah, do one-on-one. -on -one. We do one-on-one. -on -one. We talk to our clients regularly. It's not one of those, one of those places where you call in and nobody answers or you got to wait days for a call back. Typically, you'll get somebody on the phone when you call in and someone that's trained at this stuff. We have a knowledge base. We have a full-blown step-by-step uh, guide on marketing, how to use funnels. We have a, a document we call 101 Marketing Ideas that lists out from the kind of crazy and wild to the like, Hey, super low hanging fruit. You've got to do this if, at the lowest level, just to kind of dip your toe in the water ideas that we provide our clients with. And then really just to kind of break it down to the most basic of concepts that I like to teach clients about is just making it a standard part of your operating procedure to include a link to either or to, to your website. If your website's built by us and it's, it's optimized for lead gen, include a link to your website in everything that you're doing. Make that a standard part of what you're doing and, and promoting when you're putting a post out there, when you're doing an email blast, when you're writing a blog, 
when you're doing a video, it's as simple as saying, hey, click the link below if you're interested in finding out more about a specific loan type or product. And you link people and you tell them, click the link below. It only takes about 60 seconds to get started. And you're directing people to that next destination, which it should not be a loan app. I still see, and it still blows my mind. I still, I think that's why there's not much hair left up here. It's fallen out every time I see somebody post about apply now. It's like, I don't even know you, never spoke to you before in my life. You popped up in my Facebook. You're telling me something about rates are great or blah, 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 buy a house, apply now. Like, oh, I do that all the time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slow down there, partner. I know you want a loan app. I know that's what you want, but let's look at it from the consumer's point of view. I never talked to you before. I don't know who you are. Maybe Shelly, the realtor I talked to a couple of times says you're nice. That's, that's, that's helpful, but that's not a slam dunk. We got to think about it like why is why is lending tree and zillow and quicken loans and and all these big companies who've spent a lot of money to test this stuff tens of millions of dollars every probably month actually collectively when you look at what these guys are spending and they're all doing the exact same thing they take you to a little questionnaire it's just a little survey doesn't present itself as a loan app just a few easy questions typically anywhere from like 12 to about 20 really easy questions that they ask they don't start out with give me your name, email, phone number. They don't start out with create an account, give me your mother's maiden name, do all this weird, that's all friction. I don't have to like download an app. They just start asking easy questions. You hit the page. It's like, hey, you thinking about buying a house? Cool. Is this your first time? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, cool. What kind of house is it? First time, a uh, single family condo. Oh, it's a, it's a condo. Next question pops up. And they like you, before you know it, you just did this little dance and you just answered like 20 questions. Now you feel like you're invested in this process. Then they ask you for your name, email, phone number. So that's just kind of the psychology that these companies have, have figured out works best. You don't ask people for stuff they don't want to give you right up front. Name, email, phone number. Nobody opens up a website and is like dying to give up their personal information. It's the last thing they want to do typically. So they create like a buffer and they ask you a bunch of easy questions first. And that's the whole premise of how we built our lead funnels. This is the whole structure behind our websites is they have content, they look nice, good information about mortgages. They'll of course link to your loan app because that's a good service tool for people you're already working with. But the entire purpose of the site is to pull people into these little questionnaires with, with call to action buttons and links. That's all it is, buttons and links. If you, uh, I would encourage if you have a throwaway email, you can use like a Gmail that you don't use regularly. Sign up for what you'll get from Veterans United. Sign up for what Quicken Loans sends you and see how they do it. It's really, it's always the same kind of thing. Quicken Loans sends me an email every single day. You better believe it. It's two, two a day sometimes it seems like. Every time they give me a little email and then at the end there's two buttons. One is get started with a loan app, which is basically their rocket. The other one is get a, get a rate quote, which is a link to a lead form, which just, it doesn't really give me a rate quote. It just asks me questions so they can get me onto their, with their call center. I'm not a big fan of that company, obviously, but they do understand that, hey, if someone gets an email from me, they're ready for a loan app. Okay, we'll give them a link to that. If they're not ready, how do we give them like a plan B to get them to answer some questions? And then obviously, you as the person who captured that lead are able to get on the phone and do all those wonderful things that we want you to be able to do is you get on the phone and you talk to people and you build that trust and that relationship. And then you can say, Hey, awesome. Sounds like a loan application is our next step. Let's do that. And you can then tell them to do your loan application with you online. And it's a service tool, but a lot of loan officers, every, I mean, so many, most of them are still leading the charge with apply now. Yeah, my, my, my email is apply now. My social media post is apply for a loan. Everything they're putting out there is, is apply or die, which is what I call it. It's really like, hey, apply for a loan or go away. And that's what a lot of these websites are set up as as well. A lot of stuff to read about mortgages and a loan application. There's no in between. So you read stuff, you're ready for a loan app, cool. Otherwise, I don't really have much for you. And it's the exact question. opposite of what the bigger companies are doing. Uh, we have a couple questions and I have a question too, but I'll go to theirs first. I just set up my lead pop website. Where would I find more ways to create funnels or landing pages? 
Awesome. I will have my team follow up with you. There's a lot of different ways. Uh, we have a, a whole learning center in the back end of the funnels admin. And then we have a bunch of training webinars. We'll, we'll follow up if you haven't seen that stuff. Uh, it's usually kind of part of our, um, our training when we first sign you up. So I'm not sure if uh, any emails got missed, or, but those are definitely part of, what if we're like, part of our process. Well, my question is, is there anybody I could hire to do that for me? Yeah, absolutely. We do want to learn that. Training. Yeah, a lot of our clients don't. That's why, you know, I wrote the book and I didn't hold anything back. I probably back. should read it. I'm going to read it this weekend. Well, here, well, here <laughs> have fun with that. It's 300 pages long. I don't, I don't. I do it. Time. Here's the thing. I, I want to put it out there because I don't want it to be like I'm holding information hostage from people. Like you have to hire me. Otherwise, it's all in here. <laughs> right. No, it's in the book. I, we train on it. We give you access to that stuff. But I don't think loan officers and real estate agents should be spending their precious time logging into the Facebook ads manager, figuring all that stuff out. It's craziness. I have a whole team of people that does that. It's expensive. They are really good at what they do. This is all they do. And that's like, your time is valuable and it's, it's worth a lot more money, I think, than some of the tasks a lot of loan officers find themselves doing. So I'm a big proponent of, hey, have an assistant, you know, pay a good company, whether it's lead pops, there's a, a handful, not a lot. There's a handful of other companies that do some decent work out there in the, in the marketing world, but have somebody do this stuff for you. So you can focus on like the really high dollar hourly tasks that you can't outsource the stuff that you can't hire somebody to do for you. That's worth the hundred dollars an hour or, you know, do the math backwards on what you make per year and what your hourly rate actually is. If you do those numbers and you figure out like, wow, I'm worth a hundred or $200 an hour. That's insane. Like if you're making that kind of money, don't please don't be spending any, any time at all getting into Facebook ads, running those yourself or trying so to, we do out have an option to hire. Yes. We have a okay. do it for me marketing department who runs that okay. kind of stuff for you. And we are continually adding more layers to our service offering. So we just in the last couple of days, actually just last week, uh, launched our, uh, our, we call it originator everywhere. It's a retargeting service. If you're, if you're familiar with retargeting, awesome. If not, let me just explain what it is. You click on something, on Amazon, you don't buy it. Then you go to ESPN or YouTube or your wherever. And then you start to see like, here's that freaking thing I didn't buy. Stop showing it to me. I'm, you know, click, click. I'm going to buy it now. Darn it. Cause you're now following people around the internet. You can be doing that exact same thing as a loan officer. And that's okay. what, again, all the big companies are doing. So if you go to like lending tree and then you start seeing lending trees, banners all over the place, that's because they're retargeting you. It's a really smart way to keep top of mind. It's really inexpensive. We're plugged into Google's display network, meaning 94% of the websites out there are on the display network with Google. So as people leave, let's just say they clicked your site or they clicked uh, one of your landing pages or, or we're running Facebook ads, let's just say a really good conversion rate on a good day is like 15%. That is phenomenal. We're very proud of ourselves when we get ourselves to a 15% conversion rate. That means 15% of the people that clicked actually turned into a lead. That's really good. That's still 85% of the people that clicked, clicked off and didn't turn into a lead right there. So these are these opportunities to keep in front of that 85% of people that clicked, saw you, weren't quite ready. Maybe they said, ah, who's this Michelle lady mortgage? I'm going to go Google her to see who she is and like look up her reviews and kind of see what people are saying. These are the natural things we don't really think about. Like a, a smart guy, Jason Frazier, mortgage X. He, he mentioned in a, in a podcast we did together that the consumer journey is not linear. I really like that. It's true. It's not like from here to there. It's they go here. They're going to look you up there, check with this person got an email, opened up this, saw you here. And then eventually we don't know that entire, all the touch points it took for them to become, Hey, we're doing like, I just ran their credit. We're like serious now. That's what we want to encourage is let's keep you in front of those people. Let's keep you top of mind. If they clicked on your ad or they clicked on your site, they didn't convert into a lead. Let's keep you in front of those people. So now over the next, maybe they're, they're two or three months out from buying or, or they're six months out. Let's keep you in front of them then. Let's not let that like hope that they open your email every month that you're sending a newsletter. Let's, let's be proactive and, and combine these things. So you got an email newsletter, you send that out. On top of that, now you've got your retargeting banners that they're seeing with your brand, your face, your name, all over 94% of the most 
popular websites out there. That's what the biggest companies out there are doing. And we definitely took inspiration from one of my favorite, um, favorite banner types that I've seen is lending tree. They do a pretty, I don't like them as a, as what they do to the consumers and selling leads. I'm not a fan, but I can recognize good marketing when I see it. They've got some really good banner ads. They're interactive. They are dynamic. They show you like a message that kind of appears and it catches your eye is really what I'm getting at when you're on a page and a lending tree banner shows up you're going to notice it. It's not just like a static graphic on the page that you don't see. They have sharp, bright colors. They contract all these, these things really all matter. Like we've done a lot of this kind of research in building these things out for Zillow and bank rate. Like this is like our background is building this kind of stuff out and knowing that orange is going to do a much better job for you on a page, on a banner to get somebody to click than blue and everything is blue, your banner, your logo, it all blends into one thing that I don't even, I tune it right out. It's like white noise. But the way you do it is you make it pop, you make it stand out, you make it contrast, the animations, all these kinds of things make a big difference in terms of people seeing it and clicking on it. And that's the basis of how we've built these banners out. So the reason I'm bringing this up is it's another one of those things that I recommend people do. We talked about it, we coached on it. We found that clients like it, they wanted it, but they're not going to go and learn how to launch a Google display network banner ad campaign and then go out and design the banners on their own and all that. That's insanity. So what we did is we spent the last several months creating a service, creating a way that we can make it scalable internally and offer it at a price point that's super affordable. And the beauty of these retargeting ads is they're really inexpensive. It's like a hundred bucks a month is what we recommend is like your minimum budget. Chances are you're not even going to eat through $100 a month. It's a very low cost ad buy compared to like Google clicks or even Facebook clicks. And then all of a sudden, you, you're going to see yourself, if you're doing this, you're going to start, you got to get used to this. You're going to start to see yourself all over the internet. It's kind of cool in a way. Don't click on you because you don't, you don't need to click on yourself. You know where it, what it does. But that's what people are going to see is they start to see, oh, there's that Michelle Rodriguez gal. She's, she looks, she's pretty legit, apparently. She's like a local celebrity kind of thing. And it's really cool with like your referral partners. I love that. You launch a new website. I don't even care if you launched it three months ago or whatever. You don't, it's, you didn't lose that opportunity to make an announcement that you launched a new website just because it's a couple months old or whatever. If you haven't done an announcement, anytime you launch a new website, as soon as you can, and once you got it dialed in and you're feeling good, do an announcement, social media, email blast your referral partner, send it out to your database, let them know. Here's all the cool new stuff it does. Let me know what you think. I'd love your feedback. Usually it's always, I mean, a, a client just did this recently. All these awesome comments, heart, heart, love. This looks rad, really cool. Realtors, consumers, all these people were talking about his new website. All those people clicked on it. What a beautiful opportunity now to follow every single one of those people around. They're like, this freaking guy, Dave, I can't, he's all over the place. Really cool, not just to the consumer, direct to consumer marketing, but to stay top of mind with your realtors, your financial advisors, your CPAs, your referral partners, other people who are like in a position to refer you clients pretty regularly. Really good to constantly remind them at, at low cost to no cost, especially if they're not clicking on you that you're there and you're in business and you can help them. It's just a great play from a, a business to business standpoint as well to keep in front of your referral partners. Yeah, I definitely told them to call me for it today because I was gonna sign up for it. I just have not got like my brain. Okay, just signed up this week waiting for the website to be set. I just set up, are we are, okay, what is the name of his company to build a website? Does it connect with Surefire? Yeah, actually, we actually do. Uh, Lead Pops is, is the company. Lead Pops. So if I wanted to Google you, but you get a Brokers or Better um, discount, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're part of Brokers or Better, you're going to get pricing that you won't get elsewhere. Uh, it's, it's, let me, if you want, uh, Michelle, just put the, the link to it. In put the, the link um, in there. Yeah. yeah that would be super great. easy. Yep. Um, and on there, on that page, it's cool because you can learn all about what we're offering. And then if you're, if you're not ready to buy, which a lot of people are not just based on reading some stuff, there's links throughout this page that I'm putting in the chat that will allow you to schedule a, uh, hold on, let me put the link in the right way. It'll allow you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one chat with my team. So you can actually do a call. We do what we call a digital marketing assessment. We'll like walk you through some different recommendations and things. Um, so, you know, you can get your questions answered. You don't just have to sign up. Oh, I'd like to sign up. Can someone please contact me? So go ahead and check. I uh, go ahead and sign up on a, a new thing and then they have, they're really good about following up. They, I'm pretty bad about 
getting back with them, but they, they do follow up and not annoyingly. Okay, hold on. You know how you and your brain's somewhere else and like you gotta have time. <clears throat> it's actually perfect timing because I need to be worrying about this right now. My loans, I, I, I do a lot of like government lending and stuff. So I've, I've gotten slow. So I'm at a point where this is a good time for me to retarget that my energy into not only doing organic leads, I want to move into the, I don't want to do only my friend's loans. It's too, it's too depressing when they all lose their jobs. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, how do we sign up for that? I need someone. Okay, so, so Kim, are you talking about the Facebook funnel? So the retargeting is different than the Facebook. So I know, I know the hundred dollars. So basically what, what, for my get is your minimum spend on the Google retargeting is the hundred dollars. Yep. I'm going to share a link to that specifically I, right in here as well. So like just okay. to, to learn about the retargeting service, I'll put that in here as well. Make I, sure you copy in these links. Want, um, them to do it all for me. I signed up with my website and I had them kind of create it and I've done nothing with it, but I need somebody to do all my landing pages. I just need them if they have a team to do it. Cause I don't have time. Me either. And like, what's, so what's the cost? And I know, it's easier. So like, what's the cost on the Facebook funnels? I know it does like, what's your minimum spend? I know it matters. I know it, you have packages, right? Yeah. We have different packages. Just your minimum on what, spend on the Facebook. Minimum, minimum spend on Facebook is 250 a month. 250 a month. So a hundred on the Google retargeting Facebook is 250. Um, and then, so my question is, so like, let's say I, I sign up and I'm get and it's three months. Is it a contract? We ask for a 90 day commitment on the 90 day. Okay. So like I would say three months, I'm going to spend 250 a month and it's halfway working and I want to increase my ad spend. I can do that. You can definitely do that. Yes. Okay. If it's after three months, it doesn't work. I can say, no, this is not what I want. hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, my, my favorite part that I'll share with also with the group about doing this kind of stuff is when you find that you're starting to generate these consumer direct leads on your own and you're finding that, Hey, we're getting to these leads before the realtor gets a chance to, because I mean, right on one of our, on our funnels, we're asking like, Hey, are you working with a real estate agent? That's one of the questions we ask. We're finding that half the time the person says, no, I'm not, not working with a realtor yet. So all of a sudden it's like, Hey, this is really cool. We're getting leads, which obviously that's nice. But then all of a sudden we're in a position now several times a week to refer a lead back out to our real estate partners, which all of a sudden my relationship, my value, the, the dynamic of that agent relationship has now changed quite a bit because it's not just, Hey, I'm a nice loan officer. I do a good job on the deal. You know, my communication's great. All these things that they just, they keep hearing all the time. It's, it's that loyalty doesn't exist really with, with that being like the, the value proposition. But when it's like, Hey, of course we do a good job on the loan. We our, our service is great. Rates are great. All that good stuff. But we're also referring leads back out pretty consistently to our real estate partners, which we're not seeing other loan officers doing ever. It becomes a pretty fun part of that conversation to, to approach existing realtors that you know, that are, that are good to work with, that you'd like to do more business with great opportunity to sit down and reach out to those agents. Also a great way to reach out to new realtors you haven't talked to before. You know, I've got all this scripted. I mean, chapter 12 of the book maps out like, what if I was approaching a realtor I've never talked to before? Like I used to get on the phone for my, for my loan officers when I was first mapping out like this whole idea and I would pitch the realtors for them and like walk through the conversation and handle the objections. So a lot of the scripting and everything I talk about is like, this isn't just theory and like some ideas I come up with, like I'm a marketing guy. What do I know? Like I'm not, I haven't done a loan myself. It's that's true. I've been doing this for 16 years though. And all I do is work with mortgage and loan off uh, mortgage loan officers and real estate agents. So I've done the scripting. I've had the conversations, you know, understanding like if the realtor says that what's like, how do I turn around and how do I respond? Or if it's a new realtor I've never spoken with, like how do I get their attention in that first critical, like 10 seconds, 30 seconds that I have to kind of buy some more time to keep them talking and interested in me for, before they just blow me off thinking, oh, I've already got, I've got more loan officers than I know what to do with. Thanks a lot, Don. Nice to meet you. I'll take your business card. Sure. I'll put it in my drawer over here and like, maybe we'll talk and it becomes kind of, you know, it's kind of an awkward conversation and it's not that easy to kind of get your foot in the door with new agents. So part of the strategy that we offer is not just, Hey, we'll do your marketing and your ads, but it's a partnership approach. It's like, Hey, you know, I had a client recently just earlier this week, send us a list of their top five real estate agents that they're like, Hey, take a look. Can you help me kind of look at these agents and see if there's any opportunity for me to, to 
offer more value to my realtor partners. Like, hey, check out their website. Is there anything we can do to maybe make their website work better? Like, you know, one of the most popular offerings that we have that comes standard with, with our lead pops funnels in our websites is what we call our sticky bar. This is just an interactive banner that you can literally plug and play into almost any website that you have access to. So what this does is it allows you to put a message like, hey, looking to buy, get pre-approved, click here. It's an interactive message that has a, a wiggle to it, this little banner that, that kind of jiggles every, every 10 seconds or so. That links directly to a lead funnel. So what our loan officers are doing is they're finding good realtors, realtors that are doing marketing, realtors that, hey, maybe I Google something like, uh, Del, Mar, uh, Del Mar Homes for Sale or Del Mar Real Estate here locally in San Diego. I'm going to look at some of the agents that are paying to be at the top of Google. They're paying, they're doing Google ads for, for those keywords. Those are realtors I would love to partner with that are getting traffic to their website. So if I could approach that realtor, show them that, hey, I'm doing a, doing a lot of marketing on my own. I'm often in a position to refer leads back out to my realtors. I'd love to have a conversation with you about how we might be able to work together. And I can strategically take that conversation to now I can put my interactive sticky bar on that realtor's Boomtown or on their Real Geeks or their Commission Zinc or their Y Lopo. Lots of these kind of more expensive agent websites that there's a lot of value in getting yourself listed on that website as a referral partner. And especially if you can get a link back to your lead funnel linked up with an interactive banner on the homepage of that website. So now you can pull traffic from that website to your lead funnel and the leads that come from that go to both you and that real estate partner, which also becomes fun because now a lead comes in, you could text your realtor like, hey, Shelly, did you see that another one came in since this morning? That adds that the whole, the, the, the relationship with that realtor is up here, makes it very difficult for that next loan officer that comes at them with, hey, I'd like to take you out to lunch. It's gonna have to be a pretty impressive lunch menu for you to kind of undo that relationship I've got with Michelle because she's, she's sending me clients. We're doing marketing together. I'm seeing success. It's more than I've ever gotten out of any other loan officer relationship I've had. Like that, you know, the loyalty and, and some of these other challenges that loan officers have become kind of a thing of the past. It's not overnight. This doesn't happen. Like you signed up with lead pops and I've made realtors love you to the, tomorrow. But these are things we work towards. These are, you know, strategies that we kind of work on together and partner on, you know, to, to make the most out of getting your, getting your own leads. Like, hey, it's cool. You got leads, but how can we make them go that much further? We got 50 leads this month. How many of those leads became opportunities to strengthen realtor relationships, which is my favorite kind of thing. Because now you're getting more referrals from realtors because you're generating leads on your own. So like, how do we combine these things together to create like a, a, a real system and a strategy versus like a lot of people compartmentalize. They're like, oh, so if I become this like internet lead person, but you know, I don't know much about that. I, I'm like really into referrals and realtors. That's where I like, that's where I shine. I want more of that. Okay. So let's create this system here. I don't want to unplug this by any means, but let's, let's start working on this over here so that we can strengthen what you have going on over here and make these things work together. This doesn't mean you can become like Facebook internet marketing lead person. This means right. we start to plug that in. We do a little bit of consumer direct marketing. We start getting better and better at that. And we start using those leads and those relationships we're cultivating on our own to strengthen our referral partnerships with the real estate agents that matter so much to us. Right. Okay. Do you see clients having more success advertising on Facebook or Google click? Um, well, just the uh, clients on Google is, is minuscule versus the clients on Facebook at this point. Just Google is much more expensive to play on, on, on Google's playground. You're talking a couple thousand dollars a month because the clicks are really expensive. We're, you know, Facebook, we're talking $5, $8 leads. Google, we're talking $10, $12 clicks. Most people can't, don't even, maybe they can afford it, but they don't, they don't want to pay in a $2,000 a month ad spend just to kind of be there. What's really cool though, we're on the final stages. We just actually launched our, our first beta real estate website product. It's really cool. It's, it's a full blown IDX real estate website solution for realtors. We've created a hybrid though. It's not just a realtor website. It's a full blown, it's a real estate site with a mortgage website bolted on that lives inside of this real estate agent's website. 
on the, on the real estate side of things, the clicks are a lot less expensive. Like we're talking $12 clicks on mortgage. We're talking dollar and 50 cent clicks on real estate and the search volume is way higher. So as an example, the phrase San Diego mortgage, that gets typed in on Google. I have a bunch of different tools. You can check one out. Uh, a popular one I use is called semrush.com. Tells you all you need to know about websites, how often things get clicked, how often things get typed in, all kinds of useful information. You run a search query just to kind of see like, how often does San Diego mortgage get typed in? Something I would encourage anyone before they spend a bunch of money with an SEO company or something like that, look into uh, uh, some of what they're selling you because they'll sell you on something that sounds good. And then you start looking at the numbers and you're like, that doesn't even ever get typed in. Who cares if I'm number one for that? Nobody's searching for it. It sounds good, I think. But when I look at like, are people actually typing that in? It doesn't ever get typed in. This, is, this happens all the time. So we, we consult on this stuff too. We always encourage our clients, hey, before you go sign a contract with some SEO company or something like that, just run it by us. You don't obviously need our permission, but we're, we're partners. We'll tell you like, hey, I don't think that's a good idea. Or yeah, that looks legit. That's a great price point for sure. That makes sense to, to add. I, I would you know, encourage that. But like San Diego Mortgage, 170 times per month, search volume, global. 170 times per month for San Diego Mortgage. Someone in San Diego Mortgage person would think that like, oh, dude, put me at the top of Google for San Diego Mortgage. I'll have to like hire people to help me. Like that'll, I'll kill it. If I was number one for San Diego Mortgage, no, you won't. That gets typed in 170 times per month. I bet like, 70 of those are mortgage people in San Diego trying to see if they come up on Google. So the, the search volume isn't there. And they, they, the estimate on being number one in Google is that you'll get about 30% of the clicks for any given search. Number one means you get roughly 30, 30 or so percent of the people searching for it will click on the number one spot. And it goes down, as you can imagine, pretty, pretty heavy as you get to the bottom of the first page. Like number page two doesn't get almost anything. But so if you got 30% of something that got typed in 170 times per month, you got like 60 clicks, right? So it's not going to be a game changer for you. The way something like San Diego real estate, that gets typed in about 12,000 times per month. San Diego homes for sale, San Diego real estate. So the, the keywords, the search volume on real estate is a lot higher than anything you're ever going to see for mortgage. It's hyper local, which is beautiful because people don't really search for mortgage key phrase at a really, really local level. Like if you're in like in San Diego, I used Del Mar as an example. It's a pretty well-known uh, high-end community. You don't really type in like Del Mar mortgage. They might type in San Diego mortgage. Del Mar mortgage won't even show you any search results because no one ever really types that in. They might type in mortgage company near me, which is where the local pack comes in and actually having your office listed in that local area comes into play. But like organic searches, people aren't really typing things at that hyper local of a level with mortgage. Whereas with real estate, they're getting as, as, as specific as like typing in like the name of an actual community not even just the local market that they're interested in. So it allows you to get really targeted with where you wanna be and where you wanna go. The clicks are a lot less expensive. So as we're rolling out this new real estate website offering, our Google marketing, I think is gonna kick into high gear with a lot more opportunities for mortgage partners to play with Google because it's gonna be a lot less expensive. Whereas right now mortgage clicks on Google, they cut most people out of that market. It's just too expensive real estate with this combination hybrid real estate website product, mortgage website product we've created gives an opportunity for mortgage and real estate professionals to take some of that budget maybe they're giving to like Zillow and, and take it back and right. put it into Google for your own marketing and your own name branding and own name recognition. Somebody just asked, can we be a part of that pilot with the real estate and mortgage hybrid website? Do you need MLS access in order to use the hybrid deal? Your, yes. Yep. Your, your realtor will need to have uh, access to that. Okay. And, and Michelle, once we're, uh, when we're done today, will you be able to export the chat to me and, and email me that? Like, um, yeah. just I'll, I'm going to send that over to my team and have my team follow up with any other inquiries or anything I wasn't yeah. able to get to. Been studying with Perry Marshall, Google ads, limited results so far. Yeah. And Isa keeps having an issue when she's trying to pay and sign up, um, stay in failed test op. So we're going to, she, we need to get her connected with somebody. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up with that. anybody that, uh, again, send me the chat log and my team okay. will go through it and we'll you know, obviously identify which people are looking for some follow up. Or to Hi, talk to Andrew. Somebody. I'm current with Lead Pops, client website, funnel, super calc. Are you doing Google ads, formerly Google AdWords? I think he answered that a couple of times. Yep. 
I see someone listing Sher Perry Marshall, Google ads. He's a, he's a guru in the Google ads world. You know, <clears throat> what, um, what I always encourage people to think about also is that mortgage, the nuances of mortgage marketing and mortgage lead generation are such that it, a lot of the tactics and things that are being taught about just general Google ads are not applicable to like, just take what you learned in this and then just do it with Google uh, or with mortgage. Just there's certain things that just don't play nicely with other, like other types of campaigns like e-commerce. I've seen many, many marketing gurus come from like an e-commerce world and try to do mortgage marketing and mortgage lead gen and just fall flat on their face. So Perry Marshall's super smart guy. I've got his book, 80, 20, uh, marketing, um, sales and marketing, I think it is, uh, just, just study a little bit what he's taking or teaching and, 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 and look at again, how like lending trees doing it, compare some of these things. And, and definitely I would say, you know, it's smart to kind of take what he's teaching, but also compare it to like the biggest players in the industry and how they're doing it. My favorite, again, lending tree veterans, United quick and loans does pretty well. Uh, look at how they're doing it and use a tool like SEM rush. It's super helpful to see like, what are their keywords? Like what is Quicken spending all of their money on? It will come up with a list of every single keyword Google is or, or Quicken loans is targeting how much money they're putting into that keyword, what landing page they're taking you to. It shows you everything. It's insane. that They give you access to all this type of information. So don't go at it blind. Um, invest in a tool, especially if you're doing Google ads, they're so expensive. Spend a hundred bucks a month. I don't make money off of telling you this just, but spend it with like SEM rush to do some keyword research if you're not already, and you might already be doing that. So this is just general advice to anyone that's interested in that um, to, to do a little bit of research on some of the big boys. Cause they've got teams bigger than my office space that are in their digital ads department testing and and scrutinizing everything really carefully to make sure they're not leaving any stones left unturned so they're pretty good at at it and it's a pretty I good do place have to a question on like for instance because i get lead pop emails i'm probably bad i'm probably bad about it but i get lead pop emails and then whenever it's like a lead comes in and then i try to contact them is that common that they don't respond back Oh yeah. I mean, well, depend, oh, well, okay. well, well, here, let me say this the right way. It depends on how, like if the lead came in at 12 in the afternoon and you responded back at like two or 3 PM, you might, you probably lost it. Like these are the timing is of the essence. Speed of lead is the, the, okay. the cool phrase to use. That's why like uh, good clients, like uh, uh, Evan Wade's an example, super proactive guy. He doesn't try to follow up with the leads himself. He gets leads every day off of his website, just organically. He's plugged into Verse, Verse.io. It's like our favorite partner that what does What is that? that? It's, it's awesome. It's a service that follows up with your leads for you for like a straight up six months, up to 31 touches last time I checked. Phone call, text message, voicemail, emails. It's real people powered how, how by- How much is that? It's, it's, a, it's a per lead cost. So it depends on how many leads you're getting and there's different tiers. But okay. talk to my team about it. We have some really, really good pricing um, okay. depending on how many leads you're getting. And if you're getting a lot of leads, BAB, Brokers Are Better has a, a better package for you. It just depends on what, what you're getting. But it's one of those things like on average, our clients at a lower tier are paying about seven bucks a lead. But it's, to me, it's like, think about how much time. And they give you a dashboard that tells you this lead we we texted 14 times. Here's the entire dialogue back and forth. You can look at the conversation we had. Here's how many phone calls we left. Here's all the voicemails we left. And here's the six emails we sent them. And now they're ready to talk to you a month later because we, we hunted them down. <laughs> That's like two hours of time you would have had to spend sitting there like, oh gosh, all right. She said, she just, what, what does that mean? I don't even understand what she's saying they deal with all that no noise for you. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, cool. Appointment reminder synced with your calendar. Oh, looks like Donna, a lead I got three weeks ago is ready to rock. So she wants to talk today and, and we're doing an app and, and we're talking about all the next, next steps to, to, to move forward. That's where we want to get these conversations. So I, you know, I encourage clients. And one of those things, again, don't do Facebook ads yourself unless you just have a, 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 some weirdness for wanting to do it chasing leads around. Don't do it yourself. Let somebody do that for you. You're, you're worth much, much more money on an hourly basis than it takes to chase internet leads. Doesn't mean they're not good. Doesn't mean the payday is not worth the thousands of dollars you make when that loan closes, because you better believe it is. But let somebody who's an expert at that follow up for you versus great because it's they're, they're open 24 seven. 
365 staffed in the u.s in san diego a few a few miles away from my office like these are real people following up with you real real english speaking american like it's not some offshore company that's important you don't want somebody following up with your delicate important leads that can't speak the language right so you got real people following up and there's there's machine learning and ai powering the whole thing so they have so many like millions of leads that they have data that tells them like hey text message number three ideally the best message that's gotten the best response rate is this specific thing to say that's what's going to go out text message number one and all of our millions of interactions all the, the best reaction and response and phone call schedule we've gotten from that first text we've sent out is this specific message to send them within a minute and 13 seconds of them inquiring Ver, you know that's what you plug into. It's like, please let me, you know, let, let yeah, I'm me. in for that too. I just, I seen it thrown around on the page, but I never knew what it was. Yeah. It's dope. I mean, to me, I'm like, this is what, you know, it's cool about brokers are better. Anthony, Katie, his whole, their whole team. We're trying to create an ecosystem of like, what can you plug into as a broker where all these tools talk to each other? Each, each is really, really good at what it does and, and, and helps you not have to do something that's so critical, but, you know, you shouldn't be doing it yourself. Right. Lead pops is great. We build the website. We do the marketing stuff for you. We, we help feed you leads Verse is really good at, okay, now we got leads. Let's make sure these leads are turning into apps and we're closing them stuff. You shouldn't be really worried about. I want you just to take the appointments and be talking to people that are serious Verse gets them to the, the basically helps you get them to the closing table. Then you got a system like HomeBot, which is going to help you incubate and get the most out of your, your database and your, and your past clients and your referrals that system is something we plug into as well at lead pop. So when you get leads, we can drop them drop directly into verse and then drop them directly into your home bots for long-term incubation. So we're trying to really come up with a, a cohesive system that can help with all these things. Oh, that's cool. See, I was one of the first broker to sign up at home. Bot. The problem is I never updated all my stuff in there. <laughs> so it, it sounds like you, okay. Well, tell me about you, Michelle. Do you have an assistant? I'm not, not volunteering no. to be that, but I'm wondering, do you have one? No, I am it. And that's where, no, I'm, it, I am finally broke in and hired a processor. So look, baby steps. So, but my, that's what I'm asking. So this basically takes away from needing that assistant. So some of these things, but you still yeah. need, uh, you know, I would say like the home bot getting that set up. So there's, there, I think if you were to write out a list, of all the things that you do and start to like Ben Franklin style, kind of like, here's my like yeah. stuff I can't give up. Like there's no way in heck someone's going to be doing that for me versus, ah, uh, I probably shouldn't be doing that. Probably shouldn't be. I'm sure you could find a few hours every day of time that you can win back for Michelle time, whether it's you just enjoying your personal life or being able to focus on the higher end tasks right. that you are right now getting caught up in minutia with. You know, yeah, I think, is, yeah, this is going to be good downtime for me specific. I know somebody else asked me a question. Like right now you have my, my, okay. So like I have Bristol mortgage on my thing. And then I'm also in Baton Rouge and I'm also having an office in Detroit. Should I have three different, how does that work with people? Cause like on my thing, it says Bristol mortgage brokers. And then my other thing is like me and Eric, if I wanted one to also do Baton Rouge, would me and Erica be competing against each other for leads? Well, okay, good questions. So the very header of your site, the little, the, it's called the title tag. That's just for some SEO purposes. Okay. Not a whole lot of people probably searching something like Bristol Mortgage Broker, but chances right. are actually, I don't know 100%, but if I type that in because it's so unique, you might actually already come up pretty high or close to the top if I type in uh, Bristol Mortgage Broker into Google. I'm not sure yet. Um, but it's just, it's just like an SEO play. Yeah. You're actually on the first page of Google for that. That's pretty cool. It just doesn't get typed in too often. It's there at the very top in the title tag of the site. So it's not like the showcase, like call to action on the site says Bristol mortgage broker. If right. the whole site was all bristled out, then I would say, okay, you might be kind of scaring off people that are not in Bristol thinking like you're, you're just the Bristol lady. Right. You know, it's in the title tag. It's a very small reference and the whole site is pretty general in terms of the messaging. I don't think you're going to suffer from that at all. Okay. If, if you do want to place in like the local pack though, of, of meaning like in the map listings, when someone is typing like mortgage broker near me and they're typing like, yeah, you know, they're in Bristol or another area, Baton Rouge. 
having office locate like that's the whole thing is you got to have a location a brick and mortar office in that area to to place in that map listing and the closer you are to like the search in the central location and your your office is there that's what google uses to actually like place you in that map listing okay so you don't so you that's just a small thing you think that's not a big deal no but i would say that the more the more websites that you control that have leads funneling back to your enterprise, whether it's you, your assistant, you have a right. new, loan, the more of these things, the better. Like if you have one website, awesome. If you had multiple sites with different areas, I mean, as long as they're getting traffic, it, it, it behooves you to have more websites or more landing pages, let's just say. Like there's a study by HubSpot that's pretty interesting that shows a direct correlation, which I mean, it's probably common sense, but if you think about it, the more landing pages you have on the internet, the more leads you get. So if you have two landing pages, that's cool. If you have 14, 20, 25, and each of those is producing even just say one or two leads a month, if you have two versus 25. So you just think about where else can you plug these in? Your Yelp profile listing, your LinkedIn, your Facebook page. You have, let's just say over the next six months, you have now 10 real estate agents in your local market who have a link back to one of your lead funnels listed on their website and you start to see, yeah, I'm getting one or two leads a month out of each of those realtors. Now I got a client in Columbus, Ohio, who's, who's plugged into a commissions Inc website. There's really, it's a pretty highly marketed website for an agent out in his area in Columbus. He gets about 18 leads per month from just that one website. It's a real, it's, you know, imagine having 10 of those. So right. you start doing the numbers and, and the cool thing with those, those specific uh, opportunities with agents is again, the agents get a lot more traffic than you ever will as a mortgage person. There's just way more search volume, people looking for houses, looking for homes for sale than they are looking for mortgage. Just the, the nature of the beast. People want to look at homes. They don't really care to look at mortgage stuff until they have to. Exactly. It's the way it works. So if you can plug um, yourself into more agent about websites, the more, more opportunities you're going to get. Yeah, that's smart. What about, I don't, create a website I don't do that's... anything like that. I have never bought a lead. Like this is the most I've ever bought a lead in my life. Like I just, I don't know. I, I, a lot of mine is all organic, but I, I want to go to this because I feel like it's more taxing to be all organic too. The older I get, is that weird? Like I know well, it because you're because you're doing business with your friends and family stuff is that yeah what like well yeah. that's what i'm saying once you become and then you're like it, it really does start to affect your business i've done that for 19 years so it's a little bit different like now i'm looking at it where like and then when when you only have that one thing and it hurts your community like in 2016 90 percent of our stuff flooded well that hurts you that's what made me start to want to branch out to other places you see what I'm saying? And I think I've always been on the organic side, but I'm starting to change my mind on that, like where I, I need to develop relationships outside of that organic reach. Um, well, I would say if it, without impacting what you're doing there and, and stopping what's paying the bills, anytime it's like, okay, I, I never encourage people to just like unplug what's working. No, I might continue to yeah. do that, yeah. but add to it. That's a, where it's not That's... only that source. Because whenever that unique location gets hit it's it gets hard you know what sure. i'm saying yeah and the, the beauty of the web is you know you if your market is 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 hit a little bit more uh harder than another area especially with especially with mortgage in this kind of way realtors are very stuck in like this is where i am this is where i'm at i'm the celebrity or i'm known in this market and i don't want to want to drive more than a few miles outside of this area Mortgage, you can do business throughout your state. You know, you can kind of right. target or do ads in another area, maybe that is higher end or, you know, has not maybe had as big of an impact based on market conditions. Uh, someone specifically is posting in here, Randy, about real estate traffic being down. It's, it might be down, but it's still there and it's still, uh, it's still inexpensive versus mortgage. Not, not discounting what you're saying. I'm just saying it's, it's always going to be a higher than the mortgage amount. Um, Do you target for purchase? refis or you're just saying mortgages are more expensive period? Mortgages are just more expensive period. Refi is very, ex refi clicks are insane. Like um, uh, there's, there's searches out there that are like $22 a click, like for, for refinance rates, not, a, not a lead, a click. So if you, you know, if it took you 10 clicks to get one lead, you just spent 220 bucks on one lead. If it took you 10 leads to close one deal, you just spent right, $2,000 $2, to close a deal. 
you know that's but, why you uh, click we, on quicken yeah um, but you can definitely target refinance you know we're running refinance ads on facebook for clients uh in the past it has not refinance was a bit tougher because because like anything else it's not as fun for people, but with the savings and the rates being where they're at, it's, it's definitely uh, getting a better response rate than it ever has in the past, just because of the way the market is right now. So we are definitely, we are running refinance ads specifically on Facebook. Again, it's just a lot more affordable though to do it there than it is on mortgage. Most people are priced out of, uh, or sorry, of Google. Most people are priced out of Google because of the cost per click, especially on refinance. Let's go circle back to my question about if you got 10, brokers are better mortgage brokers. How are y'all, how does that happen? How does that work? Well, I would say it's better to be one of those 10 than try to be different and be, don't, but, but I'm serious about that. It's like, I, I, I can't, I can't stop. Let me rephrase that. If you're in the same market as those 10, you're all doing your own thing. You're all doing different marketing, things like that. If, if it's like you're running Facebook ads with lead pops in that same market, we actually do have limits on how many people based on the size of the audience and the marketing spend. Okay. Before That's we're competing with our, yeah, okay. So that two, okay, cool. So let's, let's separate those two things though. Cause it's important. You could have a hundred people in the same market with lead pops. It is what it is. Some will be better users. Some will be more, more, um, more, uh, uh, efficient and and good at using our system and marketing it and all that kind of stuff it just it's it's the way it is if we're running ads for you we are very careful about how many we're running and what the audience size is and how much budget can be spent before we start cannibalizing and eating into it like we're, we're competing with ourselves in essence and driving up the cost so we cut markets off pretty regularly across the country we're like hey this area is closed down until someone drops out and People don't drop out at a high rate. So it's probably, you know, until, unless you want to try another area, we can do that. But we do close areas down based on market um, size and, you know, how many people we're working with in that okay, market that, if we're running that's your ad. Fair. That's a really good question. I mean, that's fair because that's something you don't want to just take people's money and it not be, um, it's not going to, it's not going to improve your success rate as well. Um, so our whole reputation matters. Right. A lot yeah, that more. makes sense. But you can get other markets. So like if I want to build a funnel in, uh, you know, X number market in Louisiana or wherever, like, and if, if that market's not taken, then you'll be happy to change the market. We will look at, Hey, well, here's some other areas outside of there that are nearby or, or, you know, in your state, you're licensed in, which of these is attractive or doable, or do you, you know, are you comfortable with? And if there is an area like that, then we'll do that. And if okay. like, no, I'm sense. really just, this is my area. I don't want to, We'll just have to put you on a, on our on our waiting, waiting list, list and let you know if if and when it becomes available. If it does, we'll let you know. How do you, how do you target specific areas with Facebook's new uh, rules when it comes to housing ads? Because well, you can't select like a, a code anymore. I, well, I can it's, do not a zip, it's not zip code based anymore. There has to be like a 25 mile. Like you got to open it up to anybody within that specific area yeah. within those like 25 miles. That's just. You know, we work with some big, uh, big partners on the retail side of it. It's, it is what it is. We, you know, we're not, we're not specific to brokers, but that also means we are very, very heavily scrutinized for compliance by some of these big companies that have, you know, lead pops doing this for their loan officers. So anything that like the brokers end up getting access to has been pretty heavily looked at and examined by some big people in retail legal offices to let us know like, Hey, this is how to do it. It hurts us from a marketing standpoint sometimes to not be able to do all the cool things we want to do, but it is always going to end up being compliant that, you know, if we're running the ads for you, uh, it's been pretty heavily scrutinized before it goes live and is available to like the broker community. That makes sense. Any more last minute questions? Cause we're about to hit an hour. Chad, you keep hitting your screen. What do you have like bugs flying around or something? <laughs> Um, no more questions or anything. Yeah, are there any compliance issues with MLOs advertising listings? Kind of like you were talking about creating a, a hybrid uh, website. What about if an MLO just, what if I, I just wanted to create a real estate website? Like forget my mortgage stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, there is, I mean, you can't really do it. You're not going to be able to like, you're not going to be able to feed MLS listings into that website without getting approval from that MLS board to have those. Like you could build your own website to showcase properties you're not mm -hmm. going to get an MLS feed. You're not going to be able to say like search properties and plug into the MLS to feed data into that website without being approved of because you're a board or you're a member of that MLS. You just start putting properties on a random website and saying, Hey, come check out these listings. As long as you're not 
putting out there and, 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 and making people think like you're the realtor and you're the listing agent. If it's very clear that, hey, this is just a local home website, I manually, because you're not going to get these fed in, mm-hmm. you're uploading listings to that site on your own and you have the, the listing agent clearly shown. Right, give credit by, to the listing. Yeah, you could do that. It's like single property websites, right? I mean, those are very pro- popular in the, in the mortgage world. Um, same kind of idea, just very clearly labeling who the listing agent is. You can promote it and say, hey, come check out this property. Now, if I teamed up with a realtor that doesn't have his own website and I said, hey, let me do all the hard work, then I can put him on there and then I can do the MLS thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, you can split costs on it. If there's a 50, 50, like if you guys are kind of showcased equally on the site to be RESPA compliance, as long as like, Hey, the, the split is 50, 50. We're like, we're equally showcased on this website. I'm mortgage. He's real estate. We split the cost of it. You're pretty much good to go. Uh, but anytime you're rolling something new out, I always encourage like, Hey, I'm not an attorney. Like I've had a lot of our stuff looked at, but if you're unsure of anything or there's any kind of gray area, send it to an expert. You know, the, the BAP community has some good resources, but spend a little bit of money on it before you put something out there. If you're not sure, because it's gonna, it could be an expensive mistake to make. So if we're doing it, we're very clear on our end. If it's stuff you're doing on your own, just be careful with it. But the real estate website offering has been heavily scrutinized uh, by, by some high up people in the, in the marketing uh, or in the uh, compliance world. It's, it's definitely allowed. It's just as long as the, the ad split and the cost split is there, um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty much a 50-50 split on it. So it's cool because now you are going 50-50 in on, on a real estate website where you're basically, you're like co-owning that site with an agent. That's pretty cool. Um, I have lead pop site and it's going great. Question though, can we customize the questionnaire on the refi rate checker? Awesome question. Okay, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. We have a templated structure to our questionnaires that does not allow for you to go in and make any changes really. Uh, in fact, like just recently, because of the market shift, we have developed a new debt consolidation uh, lead funnel we've created that we're releasing to everybody. You can't go build that yourself though. Right now, this weekend, actually, we're cutting over to a brand new system. It's been a lot, months and months of building this. So it's going to allow us by this summer to have a full-blown builder where you can go in there and say, I don't like that question, or I want to add my own question, or I want to make my own lead funnel from scratch targeting realtors where I ask them like, hey, how many listings do you have? What kind of marketing are you doing? You can build whatever the heck you want. So that's going to be available by this summer where you could do that, actually. I'm super excited about it. We've been working on this forever. This weekend, a big change is being made to our entire system that's going to allow us to move towards the builder, which lots of new stuff is happening once we're on this new system. And that cutover is happening this weekend. I've spent a lot of time and money to get us to this point. So I'm super excited. Love that question because I have a good answer. Can't do it right now, but it's going to happen very soon. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, The last one, are the global... I think you answered that already. Um, are, are there global Facebook ads? Ken Kern mentioned it from San Diego. Frank Kern, good man. I, I spent a lot of money with means. Frank Kern. A two day event with Frank Kern cost me $15,000 actually a, a few, a few couple of years ago. It's really, I'm very happy with that investment. It made a lot of sense for me. Um, but he's talking about global Facebook ads, mentioned it. I, I guess I like know. not based on the zip code. Is that what you're I, don't I don't know what that means, actually. I have not heard that phrase before. Um, oh, I do no. know that in most places, our clients do like us to be as, as targeted and as close to their area as we can get without breaking the rules just because they don't do business globally. So I don't right, I'm not sure right. what that means. Maybe that means something else, but I haven't heard that phrase. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we're already we're at our hour, so I don't want to take anyone else's time, but this will be recorded. I'll put it on YouTube and share the link. Um, I really appreciate you, though, and I'll get your team. I'll get with my personally, I'll get with your team and try to get all this set up probably next week because I need help. We're, we're here to help. We got and I'm people sending that, you the chat box you. for anyone y'all can reach out to. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Michelle, you for putting guys. this together. Everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, if you want to chat with us, you know where to find us, leadpops.com. And if uh, you did have uh, a, a, a desire to talk to us, put something in the chat and our team will be, be following up with you. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.